flight of the Space Shuttle Challenger on Mission 51L, the 25th flight of the Space Shuttle program, began at 11.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 28, 1986. It ended 73 seconds later in a structural breakup of the external tank and orbiter in which the seven crew members perished. The solid rocket boosters continued in flight and were destroyed by the range safety officer 110 seconds after launch. The delivery and assembly of 51L launch vehicle components began months prior to launch. The solid rocket booster segments were transported by rail to the Kennedy Space Center. The SRBs were inspected and partially assembled at the rotation, processing, and storage facility. The segments were then moved to the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, where they were stacked on the mobile launch platform. The external tank arrived at KSC by barge and was moved into the VAB where it was checked out and mated to the stacked solid rocket boosters. After orbiter checkout, Challenger was rolled into the VAB and mated with the assembled external tank and SRBs. The STS-51L vehicle was transported from the VAB to the launch pad on December 22, 1985. At a crawler speed of approximately one mile per hour, the journey takes about six hours. The launch was rescheduled several times, resulting in the final countdown on January 28, 1986. The weather was forecast to be clear and cold, with temperatures dropping into the low 20s overnight. The fueling of the external tank began at 1.25 a.m. Ice had accumulated on the launch pad during the night. Several water systems were opened slightly and allowed to flow into drains. The drains froze and caused overflows. High wind gusts spread the water over large areas and ice formed. The air temperature at launch was 36 degrees Fahrenheit. This was 15 degrees colder than any previous launch. At T-minus 7 minutes and 30 seconds, the ground launch sequencer began retracting the crew access arm. The arm can be put back in place within 15 to 20 seconds if an emergency arises and the crew must evacuate the pad. At T-minus 3 minutes and 15 seconds, gimbal checks of the orbiter main engines were performed. All three engines move in a pre-programmed pattern to verify ascent flight control. The gimbal sequence ends with the engines in their start positions. At T minus 2 minutes and 55 seconds, external tank liquid oxygen pressurization began and main engine purging was completed. At T minus 2 minutes and 50 seconds, retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood began. The ground launch sequencer verified its full retraction at T minus 37 seconds. Sound suppression water was started at T minus 16 seconds. At T minus 8 seconds, hydrogen igniters were turned on to burn off any free hydrogen. 6.6 6 seconds before launch, Challenger's liquid fueled main engines were ignited in sequence and run up to full thrust. thrust from the main engines bends the shuttle stack. When it returned to vertical, the solid rocket boosters ignited. 
At T0, the hold down bolts were explosively released. After the initial pre-release twang motion, structural forces on the assembly are dissipated through vibration at a rate of three cycles per second during the first few seconds of flight. Roll maneuver was initiated at 7.724 seconds. The maneuver was completed at 21.124 seconds. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104 percent. We'll throttle down to uh, 65 percent. The main engines were throttled back to 65 percent at 35.379 seconds for about 16 seconds in order to alleviate loads during maximum dynamic pressure.